to HCS Connects. I'm Kelly Goral with Hampton City Schools. Today we have two special guests with us. We have the Academy Principal for the Academy of Advanced College Experience, Ms. Patrice Williams, and we also have Janae Thomas with us who is a junior at Phoebus High School and a part of that Academy. So welcome to HCS Connects. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Well, we're very excited to have the both of you as we've done several shows up to this point, really diving deeper into the academies of Hampton and talking about the different experiences for our young people as we have 16 academies and 41 pathways and we will be officially wall to wall with our graduating class, our juniors next year. So freshmen through seniors, wall to wall. Yes. So let's talk about the advanced college experience, which I know you all call ACE for short because that's quite a mouthful. <laughs> so Patrice, tell us a little bit about what is ACE. ACE affords our students an opportunity to earn their associate's degree while in high school. They actually graduate with their associate's degree in May prior to graduating from high school in June. Okay, so stop right there. You're saying that our students that are 18 years old, graduating from high school, yes. that they are going to walk across the stage at a community college and receive that associate's degree even before they walk across the stage and get their high school degree in June. That is correct. They wow. will walk across the stage at Thomas Nelson, earn their associate's degree in May, and turn around and graduate from high school in June. <laughs> That's amazing. It is. I mean, what an opportunity. I wish that that had been there for me whenever I was going through high school. I say the same thing about my daughter. If only she would have been afforded that opportunity. Wow. So they're in this process in high school. So what does that look like, their schedules? Their schedule looks like the traditional student in ninth and 10th grade. It transitions into the dual enrollment courses during 11th grade all of which takes place right inside of Phoebus High School. So for a lot of the students, they're already familiar with the teachers. They have built those relationships. They know how to matriculate around the building and they have friendships that are already established. So it all happens right under the roof of Phoebus High School. Wow, so Janae, you're under the roof of Phoebus High School. Yes, you are a Phoebus Phantom, proud Phoebus Phantom. Very proud. Um, and you are a junior. Yes. yes. So you were in that process of taking those dual enrollment uh, college credit courses right now. Yes. So tell us, what does your typical day look like? Well, my typical day starts with me getting to school on time. That's a great <laughs> accomplishment. I sure hope it is. <laughs> and then I eat breakfast and I go to class. I start my day with biology, dual enrollment biology, and I have a teacher, Ms. Robinson, and we do a lot of labs in there, which I love the labs because they really give us the sense of, oh my gosh, this is how biology is in the movies. Like, we're in microscopes, and we all thought, even the ones who didn't even like science before dual enrollment, we now take pictures of the slides that we see through the microscopes. We're in love with the microscopes. <laughs> and then I go on to my economics and personal finance because I needed to graduate, and I take my economics and personal finance, and then from economics, I go to quantitative reasoning, with which this semester is now statistics. So we're taking, and that's dual enrollment. Yes, dual okay. enrollment, fundamental statistics, and we have Miss Corbana, and she does wonderful lectures. And I never thought I'd be a statistics gal, but I am definitely killing it. <laughs> So two dual enrollment, any other dual enrollments? Yes. Oh, and we're then, still going. I guess. And then I go to dual enrollment VA US history. And that's taught with Miss Connors, Conyers Brinkley. And we love Miss CB. It's a lot learning about history. And it's always a fresh perspective when you're learning about it in your own state. And then my next day, which we don't take the same classes every day. So, so my like an A day, B day. A day, B day. We call it blue and gold because we're phantoms. So my that was my blue day. And my gold days are like public speaking with Miss Good in the morning, which we love. It's very interactive. We learn how to talk. I know a lot of my classmates are getting like pushed out of their comfort zone and they're loving it. They're better people. They are Is that more- that also dual enrollment? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, wow, okay, <laughs> we're keep, let's keep going. They're way more interactive. They're more lively now from taking public speaking and they're more confident. And then I go to psychology and from psychology, we're in social psycho psychology right now. So yesterday we watched 12 Angry Men, which is an amazing film and it was in black and white. So we were all a little out of our comfort zone. <laughs> 
<laughs> but because it wasn't on YouTube or your phone. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we were watching 12 Angry Men and we had to discuss about how it related to our topic, which was conformity and social influence. And it was definitely an amazing topic to talk about. And then I go to my English class taught by Miss Miguel, it's dual enrollment English, and we're in the most amazing section of English, which is debate. And I can see you're doing very well with debate tonight. I am enjoying debate, and right now we're talking about gender, so you already know it gets heated in there. So, yeah, we're really enjoying our classes, and it's a nice step outside of like traditional schooling where students can kind of get bored, but we're always, we're always excited about it. So it's obviously very rigorous. Yes. You're talking dual enrollment courses. You do have the A day, B days, but of those A day, B days, you're taking four dual enrollment courses your junior year, yes. is that correct? And then you'll take four more dual enrollment your senior year? Yes. So if I'm doing the, that's not correct. That's not correct, so how many is it? So she has her four core classes, but then she also has dual enrollment public speaking oh, yeah. and dual elected. enrollment psychology. So you're actually taking six dual enrollment courses junior year? Yes. yes. Oh, wow. For, for okay. second semester, she had six dual enrollment first semester, finished and earned 18 college credits. because so You we, already have 18 college credits yes. under your belt. Because we are college now. And she has a 4.36 GPA and she's rolling into her second 18 credit course um, credit count. So total, she'll graduate with over 60 college credits come That's next amazing. May. amazing. So you'll have over 60 college credits and an associate's degree. Yes before you graduate next June across that stage of the Coliseum for Hampton City Schools. And you're, and you're really enjoying your courses. Yes, I am. Dual enrollment allows for the variety of classes, so you can never be bored. There's always a class that you can take that will really interest you and step you right outside of your comfort zone. I can see public speaking interesting <laughs> you doing the debate. Yes. Am I right? In English, we're <laughs> loving it. So what an opportunity for our young people in that academy. Yes. And I know that that just doesn't happen overnight and it's not run by one person. So the ACE Academy does have an advisory board. Tell yes, us a little bit about the advisory board. So our advisory board has several members. We have representatives from Thomas Nelson, from the military various branches to include the Navy and the Army. We have business professionals. We have Riverside, workforce development. We also have parents and students. Collectively, we come together and we say, what is in the best interest of our young people as far as internships, externships, or what do we need to add to the academy to ensure the success of every student? Wow. So, and as far as internships and externships, you've had the opportunity to have an internship. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit yes. about your internship. I had an internship at the Convention and Visitors Bureau. It was amazing. I got to meet the staff there and we, on the first day, they told us that we could create an event and we marketed this event, we funded this event, we had to figure out the aspects like where to put bathrooms at this event. <laughs> That's very and, important. Yes, and <laughs> we just learned things that we definitely would have, wouldn't have known going to regular events as students. So then we got to pitch our events to the staff and if they really liked them, then they would jot them down and we could hopefully see that event in the future. And then in the day to day, we just went on tours of Hampton and we learned to appreciate Hampton, but not just appreciate Hampton, but the work that goes into making Hampton a tourist attraction for many other people to enjoy Hampton who just don't live here. So let me ask you a question. Now that you've had that internship, have you been to any events in Hampton that you kind of just look at it in a very different way now? Yes, I've been to many events at the Coliseum where I was at the Coliseum and sometimes I'll even see people that I was working with at my internship and I'll be like, hey, and they'll be like, hey. But I always look at the bathrooms and I'll be like, you look at the bathrooms. They're so now. expensive. Yes. <laughs> And I'm like, y'all have bathrooms and then they provide food, so then that's even more expense. And then you have to figure out the catering and then the make sure they are up to date with code. And So you learned a lot in that yes. internship. And now I look at events in a way larger light where I can definitely see. So just showing up and enjoying work. the entertainment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty funny, but I love it. I absolutely love it because it's making you think outside of that box. Now, you know, you've got the advisory boards, you've got internships. Mm -hmm. 
Um, what about any prerequisites for students that are interested in ACE for their future? Um, the only prerequisite that we have is students have to have taken the Algebra 1 in middle school. Um, for some students, military families or transfers from different states or cities, they may not have been afforded the opportunity to take the Algebra 1 course, so they can take it over the summer. Okay. As long as they finish the course successfully both terms, so passing semester 1 and semester 2, they are eligible to start ACE in the ninth grade. So really breaking down barriers and making sure that we are focusing on equity. Yes. That it is an opportunity for any of our students. Any student. Oh wow. Any student. And we work very closely with our students and parents to make sure that they understand that we are here to support them. Whether it's, I know at one point we had some students that were struggling with the course and we actually helped them to develop what we call study buddies. Um, Janae and several other students have excuse blocks in their schedule. So Mr. Whirl, our librarian, provides them a space where they can actually come to the media center and they can work in study groups. They have their ID cards where they can go to Thomas Nelson and use their facilities there as well. So we make sure that we're hitting every area to provide as much support as possible. Now you said ID cards, so you have a Thomas Nelson Community College ID card. Yes. Because technically you're a Thomas Nelson Community College student. She's college so, now. So you're college now. What does that feel like? So you're not just a junior and 11th grader at Phoebus High School, you are a college student right now. Yes, and it is very surreal. <laughs> <laughs> Me and all my friends, we like to pull out our ID cards for no reason. We just pull them out because we are juniors in high school and also college students, and we're just really enjoying the experience. We love to see our fellow peers at Thomas Nelson. So you do go to Thomas Nelson. Yes. yes. We utilize a lot of the facilities there, especially the library, because it is very gorgeous. And the Wi-Fi there is very fast and they have a lot of resources there for especially during exam time because we are college students now. So we have exam week, which we were all excited about, which is very weird, but we were all <laughs> excited about finally having an exam week and we went to the library and we utilized all the resources there so that we could pass all our exams. But you know, obviously there's a lot of rigor and you're a college student as well, college now, but you do have a life beyond just your rigorous courses, correct? Yes. And you're still vertical, so we know <laughs> that you're doing all right. So tell us, what are some of the other things that you and your classmates are involved in? A lot of my peers, we all work so we have jobs and we still balance our dual enrollment classes. And at Phoebus High School, a lot of our students play sports. Sometimes more sports a season. Sometimes I know a girl who plays three sports in one season oh, wow. and she goes off and continues to play a sport every other season. And she passed all her dual enrollment classes with an A or a B. And I just think that a lot of people lose sight of the fact that we are getting life, you know? Dual enrollment is not all about dual enrollment. We still, we afford this opportunity, but then we also have lives like sporting events. And me and my friends just went to the Day of Destruction at Langley Speedway this weekend. Okay. And that was my first time seeing a burnout, and I don't think I was ready for it. It was a lot of smoke in the air. Um, but you have the opportunity to go do things and be social with your yes, friends. Yes be it an extracurricular activity, you know, having a job right now, or just plain old having fun with your friends right. on the weekends or potentially a weeknight. So dual enrollment's rigorous, but you're able to balance everything, keep all right. those balls in the air, <laughs> and, and still do very well. You said you had a 4.36 GPA. Yes. Yes. That's amazing. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> I want to be Janae. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people do. <laughs> So is there anything else that you think that we're missing? We've talked about kind of the criteria and what the actual academy is. Now we've talked about an associate's degree, but how many different associate, associate degree options are available? There are two. There's the Associates of Science. So those are for the kids who are interested more like in the STEM programs, your science, your math. Um, then we have the Social Science. That's Janae. I was going to say, is that, is that Janae? <laughs> so that may be if you're interested in owning your own business, social work, counseling. Um, we have education that falls under there as well. Um, the blessing for them is that as they finish their associate's degree, they're guaranteed acceptance into any Virginia college. So the 21 Virginia colleges or university, they slide right on in. Wow. Yeah. So we're going to wrap up, but as we do, 
what or where, I guess, exactly are you looking to potentially go after high school? After high school, I want to go to Xavier University of Louisiana. Oh, wow. Yes, it's an HBCU and it's D1 in volleyball. And I do want to play volleyball in college. And I want to major in business administration and minor in African American diaspora. And later, I'm going to open up a chain of hotels and other business ventures. You definitely have your 10 year plan set. I definitely do. So, what does this academy experience really mean to you then? It means being able to afford college. It means being able to get an equitable opportunity for education because I am a twin and my mom is a single mother so she is definitely going to have to put two kids through college at the same time. And me and my brother are utilizing the dual enrollment opportunity so that we can cut the cost and take some weight off my mom's shoulders because we love her and we want her to enjoy our college experience as much as we will. I don't think that we could have said that any better. Nope. Well, thank you both for being here today. I'm so excited to get more information out about ACE and, you know, not just what it is, but really what it means to our young people and that experience for them. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us on HCS Connects. In the meantime, stay connected with us. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, or jump over to our HCS website or our YouTube channel. Thanks and have a great day.